Hello friends, I'm still not Jim Nance. This is Kurt Berglund with Kurt Berglund's Baseball Strategy Stumpers, a regular series on my channel where we look at conventional wisdom, we look at the metrics, we look at modern thinking about certain baseball strategy dilemmas and today we are up to episode five in the series don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date this is episode five i have a playlist running of all of the strategy stumper episodes that we are doing um today we're taking uh, another cue from the book which was released in 2007 and we're going to look at the batting order. And actually, the batting order is something that we're going to look at over the next uh, few months, uh, off and on, different elements of it. And one of the things, one of the themes of this uh, uh, series of episodes that we are doing is to see what you would do and I'm interested in your feedback and your comments about how these concepts apply to your favorite team. Um, so today we're going to look at the construction of the batting order and the maximum run production that you can get from that. Now we know from lots of different studies that the batting order is something that you can easily overrate the impact of on run production. In short, it doesn't matter a lot over 162 games who bats where. But it could matter a little bit, and a little bit could be enough to make the difference between a playoff run and going home early for the winter. So we're gonna look at three rules that the book comes up with for us, and we're gonna apply them to the 1927 Yankees as an example, and then I'm gonna ask you to chime in on how your team does with these concepts. All right, so here is the list of the three rules of thumb. The first one, the first rule of thumb and again, this is to maximize run production from your uh, nine players that are on the field uh, at that time. So the first rule of thumb is that your three best hitters should occupy spots one, two, and four in the batting order. All right. Now this has to do with a lot of different pieces, but you're talking about on base and your ability to deliver the runs. The number four, not that kind of runs. Jeez. The number four hitter, of course, is very important in all those ways in the event that you get a one, two, three first inning. Now you're starting over again, but you're starting with someone who hopefully can get on base for your second inning and keep the train moving. All right, so if we look at the 27 Yankees, that's our test case, is the 27 Yankees. Their hitters in those spots were Earl Combs, the center fielder. The number two hitter most often was Mark Koenig, who was the shortstop. And the number four hitter was Lou Gehrig. So you can take a look and see if Miller Huggins is applying these concepts to the 27 Yankees, and clearly the answer is no. Koenig might have been the worst hitter on the field at that time, but he was hitting in the number two slot. Uh, whether Combs or Musil makes the top three, I'll leave that up to you. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Clearly, Garrig and Ruth were the centerpieces of the offense, and... Uh, Ruth is nowhere to be found in either slot one, two, or four. Let's look at rule of thumb number two. Rule of thumb number two is that your next hitters, your fourth and fifth best hitters, should go in slots three and five, respectively. 
your fourth and fifth best hitters should go in slots three and five, respectively. All right. So for the 27 Yankees, hitting third was Babe Ruth, and hitting fifth was left fielder Bob Musil. As I said before, you could make a case, I think I would, that Musil was actually their third best offensive player, not Combs. So that would mean Ruth... Gehrig and Combs, the, the three, four, five hitters in real life, weren't in their correct, correct spots, according to this theory. So, that's rule of thumb number two. Rule of thumb number three is from slots six through nine, you put your hitters in descending quality. So, it's pretty basic there. The next worst, the next worst, the next worst, and the next worst. Well, for the 27 Yankees, we put our test there, and their sixth hitter most often was Tony Lazeri. Their seventh hitter most often was third baseman Joe Dugan, and then they followed that with their eighth hitter, the catcher, and their ninth hitter, the pitcher. All right, so... Second baseman Lazari was sixth, Dugan was seventh, the third baseman, the catcher was eighth, and whoever the pitcher was would bat ninth. Now you could make the case here, even, that Lazari was a better offensive player than Combs was, which would really mean that this order didn't even come close to meeting the standards of what metrics would tell us the best order is. But this plugs in for you some hitters in a real-life lineup to give you an idea of how these concepts would apply. The key is at the top, as you might guess. Over the course of a 60 of 162-game season, every spot in the batting order in that season gets 60 more at-bats on average than the next one does. So if that's the case, obviously the top of the order is a little bit more important than the rest. And according to the book, it spots one, two, and four where those top three hitters should land. So at the bottom here, I'm asking you, what about your favorite team? How do they do on this test? Are they following the concepts of the book in organizing the hitters in the order in this sequence. Top guys, one, two, and four. Fourth and fifth should be in the third spot in the order and the fifth spot in the order. And then you just go six, seven, eight, nine with whoever's left. Does your team do that? Tell me in the comments below and we'll have a dialogue about that. In a few weeks, we'll talk more, and I'll come back, and I'll do the mailbag and talk about your comments and how your team is doing based on these rules of thumb for the batting, for the batting order construction that's talked about in the book. Next week, we'll have another Kurt Berglund's Baseball Strategy Stumpers. Come on back. Don't forget to subscribe. I need your subscriptions to keep this channel going. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy baseball, everybody. So long, everybody.